Hello and welcome back ladies. If you're new here, my name is Jax and this is where I have been sharing our journey through infertility, IVF, adoption, parenting, and now pregnancy. I am 36 weeks pregnant and this week I wanna share with you what's going in my hospital bags, plural, as well as how that differed from what we brought in our last hospital bag because for our daughter Evangeline, I was not giving birth, we adopted her, so what was in our bags was a little bit different. But I sure did learn a lot from that experience and it's influenced what's going in these hospital bags. Let's jump in. Let's start things off with the labor and delivery bag. I've chosen to divide what we're taking into the hospital into three bags, and the first of which is the labor and delivery bag, while the other two are kind of the me bag and then the husband and baby bag. Basically, my idea was if we're rushing into the hospital, I just wanna be able to carry one bag, this one, and then once we get to a recovery room, I can send the husband back out to get the other two bags that we need for the rest of our stay in the hospital. That stops like excess shuffling of things around and having to keep track of bags that we don't necessarily need. Um, this one right here is the critical bag. If we only grab one, this is the one we need. The first thing that is in this bag is something I have learned both from our last stay in the hospital as well as my wedding day, and it is a bunch of snacks. Literally this entire top compartment is just snacks. I can't tell you how hungry we got, <laughs> both on my wedding and in the hospital. But basically at the last hospital stay, it was, we thought there'd be, I don't know, places around to grab food, but it turned out they were really far away and we were having trouble like finding a good moment for one of us to go and get food. And especially now with COVID, I, I'm i sure you can get it delivered to the front of the hospital, but you still probably have to get buzzed in and out and do all that jazz. Lesson learned, this is just snacks. This is just all snacks for the husband to eat during labor and delivery and then for me to eat afterwards. Next up are some nice new clean masks. Actually, one of my friends, Angelique, got these for us as part of baby showery gifts, but I really like the idea that she got us these nice masks because we're gonna have to have masks on periodically as different people coming in the room. I don't need them during actual, um, when no one else is in there, but I thought it was really nice to have like a designated stash of these nice, crisp, clean white masks um, ready to go uh, for the hospital. That way we're not like searching for masks or having to worry about it or wearing ones that are gross and dirty that we've been using for a few days. It was nice to have these clean ones. Next are a few clothing items for me. I went ahead and ordered some of these grippy socks from Amazon. Um, my feet get notoriously cold. I always wear socks and these ones have the nice grip so they should let me wear them in the hospital without fear of me falling. So I got a few pairs of those so I can swap out over the next or a couple few days. Um, I'm bringing a sports bra in case I want to get in and out of the tub or in case it just gets uncomfortable. Having something nice and stretchy uh, during labor and delivery seemed like a good idea. And along those lines, I am bringing a headband as well to keep my hair. I don't have a lot of hair anymore, <laughs> but at least to keep my bags and stuff out of my face during labor and delivery. I can see that getting very annoying. And finally is a hospital gown. Now this one is specifically meant for labor and delivery. Again, I think I snagged this off Amazon and I'll leave links down below for anything I mention, but it has these snaps on the front for easy breastfeeding. And then it also has snaps on the back so that an anesthesiologist can get access to your back if you need an epidural. Um, I mentioned this, I think, I think in my birth plan video, but this also just makes it feel a little less clinical, a little less hospitally, um, and hospital gowns wig me out. Like if I think too long about how many people have worn them, it just wigs me out. So I am well aware this is gonna get destroyed. That's totally fine. <laughs> along with the snacks, I am also bringing along these body armor drinks. I don't know if you've tried them, but I adore them. They are coconut water based and they're a little pricey, don't get me wrong, um, but they are amazing for just a kind of like light, fruity drink and considering you're not allowed to eat, I figured something that has um, electrolytes and B vitamins, get some energy back in you. This is absolutely perfect. So I'm packing two of these in my labor and delivery bag as well. I kept toiletries to a pretty minimum in this bag, but there was a few things I wanted to make sure I had access to. One of them was contact solution in case my eyes start bugging me. I want my contacts out um, and some tissues, just 
a few things like that and specifically makeup removers. Um, if I get hot, if I get sweaty, if my makeup starts to come off, I, I wanna have a quick, easy way to get all of that off. All right, and then electronics wise, I'll touch on the like mass amount of electronics that we're gonna bring later, but for the labor and delivery bag, there was a few things that were critical. Um, I have two of these power packs and cords and a plug-in so that everyone's phone can stay charged. And even if there's not a plug around, especially if I'm moving around, I wanna make sure that I can be mobile. So I brought these uh, power packs and cords uh, because we don't want anyone's phone dying during all of this. And I also am bringing a speaker so that if I don't want to wear headphones or anything like that, I can pump music through a speaker. So the last thing that is in my bag are diapers. And I figured that this could only be more helpful than trying to like concoct a pad underwear, witch hazel, the cream situation that having more absorbency and more coverage could only be helpful. We'll see. I'll, I'll check back in to see if this was a good idea or not. But for like the 10 bucks to buy a pack of underwear, I thought for immediately postpartum and then for, you know, the, the few days after where bleeding is so heavy that having diapers would probably save me some pants or dresses from getting ruined. We'll see, like I said, I don't hear a lot of people using this, so maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe they aren't as comfy, but I mean, look at that. Look at how sexy and stretchy that is. I don't see that being uncomfortable. Like I said, gamble, we'll see. Then the only things that aren't in this bag right now that are on my handy dandy checklist that need to be added before we leave are some noise canceling headphones as well as my glasses. Um, and those will get added to this immediate need labor and delivery bag before we go. Anything that I can't pack ahead of time is on my list and we will go through it and check it off um, before we leave. Next up is the mama bag. This is everything that I think I will need in like the recovery room time frame, <laughs> those, those few days immediately postpartum. Although this time, unlike with our adoption, we are very lucky that I can send the husband home to get stuff and he probably will be going home to check on Evangeline and those kind of things. So I don't have to be quite as um, meticulous with what I pack, but I think I gained a little bit of knowledge around what I actually need and what I don't need from our stay in the hospital. And obviously that entire labor and delivery bag, we did not bring for Evangeline's uh, birth since I was not laboring or delivering a baby. So we didn't bring any of that minus maybe a handful of snacks that we ripped through pretty fast. I think maybe we didn't even do that. We brought these huge like gift basket baskets for like the nurses that had all these snacks in it. And I think we didn't bring any snacks for ourselves. That was dumb. Picked up some just cheap flip-flops to shower in if I need to, walk around um, the, the floor, walk around the room. Um, hospital floors are gross and putting on shoes is annoying. So, especially if you have like a big C-section scar. So, really big, nice flip-flops that can get wet and that I don't have to worry about what happens to them. On the note of food, I am bringing some Soylents. Um, I think if you... <laughs> I haven't mentioned Soylent in a while. I'm not sponsored by them, but I do love Soylent. They're essentially a meal replacement uh, drink. I don't really need hospital food. These are full of nutrients. They're quick, they're easy, um, and I don't wanna have to worry about food. It was a big problem with Evangeline's birth of like trying to find food and getting food. And so having a few just meals on hand that are easy for me, packed with nutrients, is what I need. For sleep, uh, lesson learned from, from the last time. Uh, there's noise, there's lights, nurses come in and out. There's just a lot of noises in a hospital. And even though I mentioned in one of my um, pregnancy updates when we did the tour, it sounds like this hospital is way better about managing noise and light um, on the recovery ward. I still wanted to be prepared. I am bringing an eye mask, I am bringing earplugs, and I am bringing a sound machine. We brought just the sound machine last time and it was a huge help, um, but lesson learned, go full, full out on trying to get at least what sleep you can because they come in and out all the time waking you up and inadvertently waking you up as you go into other rooms and you're not alone, so you're by people. Anyway, if there's anything that can help you get better sleep in a hospital, bring it. So this little bag is kind of our toiletries and my little skim down 
um, set of makeup for those three days. And I am bringing just a few essentials. I'm not bringing like a full makeup stash, but again, I've kind of learned what makes you feel human and what doesn't um, kind of post baby. So I'm bringing some foundation and I'm bringing some mascara. I think I'm also bringing some lotion, lesson learned, bring lotion. I don't know what it is about a hospital. They're so dry. Bring some lotion, deodorant. I'm also bringing um, disposable toothbrushes. Uh, again, a lesson learned from last time, we brought our electric ones and we ended up staying an extra day. So I think by the time we had stayed like all three, three and a half days, our toothbrushes had almost died. And also I they felt gross hospitals are gross <laughs> you know so i lesson learned bringing some disposable ones we have a zillion from obviously freebies from the dentist and along the lines of just trying to like keep things easy i'm also bringing some of these wet wipes um just for you know what just for whatever i need them for uh, in the hospital whether it's like quick cleaning up when you don't need to shower or helping with those first postpartum <laughs> bathroom visits. Uh, I can't see these not being helpful at some point. The next big item that's different, obviously from our adoption bag, is one of these belly binders. Look at how huge that is. There's so many parts to it. And then there's like this part. I kept the instructions in there so that I can actually learn how to use them. Um, again, I know different people have different preferences over like the tension of this and the like style and how aggressively they bind, but I'm gonna give it a shot <laughs> on, 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 on using one of these post-birth. And I think especially if we do end up having a C-section, there's a lot of praise around these kind of belly binders to kind of help hold things in place and help um, keep your incision like secure as you move around and laugh and cough and sneeze, <laughs> you know, those kind of things. So this goes in my recovery bag. And pretty much the rest of the bag is clothing. And specifically, there's a few things that are making it in here from lessons learned from Evangeline's birth. One, really warm fuzzy socks. Uh, hospitals get cold and I'm always cold and I'm bringing a lot of fuzzy socks. Two is a good hoodie. Again, it gets cold and you want something that's easy to get on and off. And then just lots of clothes. Last time again, we ended up staying longer than we expected and babies spit up and it's just gross. And we were re-wearing clothes. It wasn't great. So making sure to bring lots of clothes, lots of really comfy stuff. I'm bringing my maternity sweatpants and like maternity nightgown. Lots of things that don't put any pressure on your stomach, just in case I do end up having a C-section. Like I said, luckily we're closer to home, so if I do need to send the husband home to do laundry or grab more clothes, we have that option now. Uh, but it's just, I think, so much easier to have your options ready to go. Then, of course, there's a few things that didn't make it in um, because I need them for my life just around the house. And that is just more toiletries, really. A hairbrush, condition, shampoo, the hair paste I use to like style my bangs back, um, body, body soap, facial lotion, things I didn't have duplicates of. A lot of the stuff in this bag was just duplicates or kind of the tail end of my mascara or foundation that I snuck away in here. Uh, those kind of things will, um, it will be added last minute and then a few more outfits because a few of the dresses I want like this one you know are obviously being worn and in rotation right now so we'll add some more clothes add some more toiletries but otherwise my bag is good to go and finally is the husband and baby bag and this is the one that is the least packed because it's my husband's and he hasn't packed it but also because packing for him is just gonna be easy you know underwear socks some shorts and some shirts and we'll be good but I will go through what I'm bringing for baby because this is probably the section where I learned the most from being in the hospital with Evangeline. I learned a few things. One, bring all of the clothes. I know people are like, oh, it doesn't matter. They're just in those blankets. No, uh, she went through so many clothes because she spit up so much. And so I'm bringing all of the onesies. And since there's no way Kingsley's going to be huge, you can check out my updates for reasons why there's no way this baby's gonna be huge. I specifically went through all my newborn clothes and picked out the things that were the smallest. I remember this from her. She was born really small, not that we knew that. And she swam in some of those newborn clothes or those zero to three month. So I have specifically pulled out ones that are small. Like, look at this one. This one's tarnary. It's so cute, but it fit her perfectly when she was fresh born. So I am bringing, um, all of these little onesies, uh, just in case they get demolished. They don't take up a lot of room in your bag, and I like having 
my baby in clothes even in the hospital. Um, even though all the times they're like, oh, most of the time they say swaddled in those hospital blankets. I hate those hospital blankets, which is why the next thing on my list is a swaddle, okay? Uh, these are, yeah, these are my favorite ones, the Halo Sleep Sacks, and these actually made it onto my What I Bought Again list, which will be coming out next week, um, which is the things I've bought again for Kingsley, obviously with Evangeline being so little and so fresh, <laughs> we, and our second baby, we didn't need a whole lot, but there are some things I bought again, so I decided to make a list of those, but these swaddles are one of them. I don't know if Evangeline was a little escape artist or if we were just incompetent at swall swaddling, but trying to swallow, swaddle her in those hospital blankets was impossible. She broke out all the time. And all I can think now is if we had had a proper swaddle, we could have had such an easier time in the hospital. So I think, I don't know why I only have one. I'm definitely gonna put another one in here to, to make it easier on us. So for little baby Kingsley, lots of outfits and a nice swaddle or two to help us with those first few nights because they do, they love being swaddled and these are absolute favorites. Yeah, other than that, this is where all the husband's clothes are going. I'm not bringing anything else for baby. I'm not bringing pacifiers um, or bottles or anything like that. Uh, the hospital will supply most of that. Um, I'm also, if you have been around for a while, you know I cloth diaper, but I'm also not bringing diapers. We do use disposables or plan on using disposables for those first few days because those meconium poops are gross and they can ruin cloth diapers. So it's just easier to use the hospital's diapers um, from, from the get go. And then all that's left is um, various cameras, which I obviously can't pack because I'm using <laughs> to film these type of things, but I am bringing several cameras to try to get some good footage. I can't promise things for the birth vlog because A, I don't know what kind of birth we're gonna get, when it's gonna happen or what to expect at all. So I'm gonna try my best to get some footage so that at least I can put together a decent birth story video, um, if not a true birth vlog video. But that stuff will also be packed last minute. Um, to, <laughs> so hopefully it all makes it, <laughs> you know. All right, I think that wraps up what's going in our hospital bags. I think the biggest lessons learned from little baby Evangeline were uh, lots of baby clothes, uh, swaddles for sure, and then clothes for us and snacks for us. Those are the biggest things that I kind of learned from last time. There wasn't a whole lot in my bag I didn't use last time. I say, I mean, I'd have to go watch that video again. Sorry, I just went and looked up like the, my notes, I always t like take notes before I film a video. And it turns out I did do a what's in my hospital bag and a what I actually use for my hospital bag for my adoption video, adoption hospital bag video. And here are my notes. Wish we brought more food in onesies. I remembered, obviously it stuck with me a year and a half later, we really needed that. As well as, oh, the husband's point of view, he's, he wanted extra clothes too. He felt grimy as well. So, hey, I remembered, I am actually really proud of myself. So there, it's confirmed. I'll leave those videos linked down below as well as any of the products I got off Amazon. I'll link those down below. Um, but most of the stuff I think I had around. Hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. Um, if I did, you can leave a comment below and hopefully I'll get it in time before little baby Kingsley shows up. But until next time, ladies, keep on fighting. Mwah.